Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. Okay there, men, right this way for Command Performance, Uncle Sam's finest show for Uncle Sam's finest fighting men. Tonight, the old Command Performance marquee is lighted up with one of Hollywood's brightest constellations of big stars, and the first star we see tonight gets his orders from you-know-who at Newfoundland, at Fort Randolph, at Trinidad, from 14 ships at sea, and, well, let's get him out here right now, your master of ceremonies, Bob Holt. Hey, thank you, Paul Douglas, and hiya, fellas. This is Bob Rubber Drive Hope <laughs> telling you guys out there that we're all going to keep turning in our rubber suspenders till we've caught the axis with our panzers down. <laughs> well, everybody here is talking about the rubber drive. Back in New York, they were worried about the rubber drive for a while, but not anymore. Kate Smith finally turned in her girdle. <laughs> You should see the moon come over the mountain now, but I'm not worried. But I'm... But I'm not worried about the rubber shortage. I've got four new tires, and I put them all on my front wheel. I want them to be where I can watch them. But I want to tell you, this rubber situation is really serious. Last night, three fellas broke into my room at the Knickerbocker Hotel, jacked me up, and stole my hot water bottle. <laughs> But it's not my tires I'm worried about, it's gas. No kidding. I haven't been able to get any gas for the last 10 days since my siphon broke. <laughs> of course, of course, there's a shortage of automobiles, but I don't see anything wrong in riding horses. My grandmother used to ride a horse till the day Crosby fired her. <laughs> but... All right. Thank you, losers. But you know, everybody... <laughs> People will have to use all forms of transportation. Imagine Lana Turner bouncing down the street on a pogo stick. <laughs> That's all, brother. <laughs> but it's really great being back in Hollywood after two months in the East. First night back, I was on duty with the, all the air raid wardens in North Hollywood. They kept us busy all night dimming out W.C. Fields' nose. <laughs> The next night, I had a date with Hedy Lamar. I was real chummy driving around in the dark. I was just about to kiss her when there was a loud explosion. I thought it was a blowout until I found out she was chewing bubble gum and I had a toothpick in my mouth. <laughs> but, but it's wonderful being back in town and at the studio. I just finished working in a picture with Crosby and Dorothy Lamour. Dorothy's dressing room window faces mine. Every time, she, every time she goes up to change her costume, I go up to change mine. But she's always a shade ahead of me. <laughs> The, the picture's called The Road to Morocco, and in it, Dorothy does a great dance. She does an imitation of Gypsy Rose Lee doing the dance of the Seven Veils. It's a wonderful takeoff. And after that, <laughs> and after that, Crosby and I wander through the desert and wind up at a harem. Harem, that's Egyptian, for having a wonderful time. <laughs> Crosby and I sneak into this place and find out that it's a real Turkish harem, so as soon as I get alone with the girls, I start talking turkey. But there's a big... <laughs> I pause there, silly man. <laughs> But there's a big eunuch there with a long handle knife. You know what a eunuch is, don't you? That's 4F in anybody's army. <laughs> well, this. <laughs> I wish they wouldn't play with my scripts. Well, this big. <laughs> Well, this big eunuch is standing there with a knife, and he starts swinging as soon as any dope starts getting fresh with the girls. You must come up and see my scars sometime. <laughs> in the last part of the picture, Dorothy Lamour and I do our big love scene. I'm disguised as the sheik, and I take her in my arms and kiss her. When we get through with the scene, I turn to Dorothy and say, You just kissed Hope the sheik. Could Rudolph Valentino kiss any better? And she says, Even now, yes. <laughs> 
enough about us. Now to answer that May 24th letter from 18 Navy men who signed themselves an outfit in the West Indies and who say, we'll keep them sinking if you keep them singing a little number called Just One of Those Things by a little number who is the singing sensation of MGM, Lena Horn. Take it, Lena. for that outfit in the West Indies. Thank you, Lena Horn, and thanks to Victor Young of Paramount Studios conducting Local 47's Command Performance Orchestra tonight. <laughs> and now for the radio gang at Box ND11, for Private J.G. at Fort Cobby, and for Sergeant C.W.K. somewhere in South America, the Dean of American Vaudeville Teams, Shaw and Lee. <laughs> Our scene is the Tiptoe Manor apartment house. Mr. Shaw has been ordered by his doctor to get absolute peace and quiet, so he is looking at a very quiet apartment on a very quiet street. As the scene opens, Mr. Sam Lee, the rental agent, is showing Mr. Shaw through his new apartment. Everything is very quiet. Mr. Shaw, I know you're going to be very, very happy here at the Tiptoe Manor. Good. The doctor says I must have absolute rest. And not a... Are you sure it's quiet here? Oh, positive. We have no dogs, no cats, no drinking, no wild parties, and no beautiful women running into your apartment in the middle of the night. Quiet, this place is a sphinx. It certainly does. <laughs> Not so loud. Remember, this is Tiptoe Manor. Quiet all the time. That's good. I can't sleep. I've had insomnia ever since I was a little kid. A kid with insomnia? Ridiculous. Did you ever hear of the Sandman? Sure. Uh, well, what time did he come to your house? What? Right after my old man went to work. <laughs> I'll leave you now. I know you want to get some rest. Oh, by the way, there's one slight noise you may hear from time to time. One slight noise? Yeah, but it won't bother you. It's very slight. <laughs> See, that isn't very loud, is it? Don't shout! I use the Murphy phone. <laughs> very, very quiet trains. In fact, it gets so quiet around here, you can hear a pin drop. <laughs> what do they use around here for pins? Crowbars? 
I will leave you now to the peace and tranquility of Tiptoe Manor. Goodbye. Shh. Thank you. Mmm, he's wearing sneakers. <laughs> oh, well, here I am alone at last. What is this, Dollar Day? Come in. Uh, pardon me, buddy. What do you want? I'm the tenant who moved out of this apartment this morning. Mind if I leave this under your sink? Leave what? 483 cockroaches. Oh. I'll just leave them under your sink. What for? Well, the lease says I gotta leave this place exactly the way I found it. So long. Mm, how do you like that? 483 cockroaches. Well, this housing shortage, a man should share his room. Oh, well, now to get some sleep. Nuts! Hello! Mr. Shaw, this is your next door neighbor, Miss Penelope Prune Purse. And in your help, there's a man hiding under my bed. A great, big, strong brute of a man. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Just lock the door from the outside, brother. That's all. <laughs> Nice, quiet place. All I need now is a noisy radiator. Thank you. What now? Come in. On approval. Who are you? The plumber. I gotta fix your radiator. Well, go ahead, but be quiet. I've gotta get some sleep. I'll be in the boudoir. The what? Boudoir, boudoir. What are you sleeping? My underwear. <laughs> All right, go ahead with the radiator. But for heaven's sake, keep quiet. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm the quietest plumber in town. Die, 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 dee, die, 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 dee, deep in the heart of Texas. Wait a minute, wait, I can't stand it any longer. Brains, cockroaches, old maids, plumbers. I gotta have peace, I gotta have quiet. If you wanna fix something, fix that big hole in the window. But there isn't any hole in the window. Well, there is now. <laughs> Thank you, Sean Lee. And now all you men in the Jeeps and bombers and mine planters and subs, hang under your GI hats, for here comes the hottest band north of Trinidad and south of Iceland, answering scores of your letters with a great arrangement of the Anvil Chorus. It's Les Brown and his orchestra.
you, my records. Thank you, Les Brown and your swell band. And now, fellas, as you know, command performance gets a lot of unusual requests. Remember the guy who wanted Carol Landis to sigh? That's all, brother, just sigh. And the soldier who asked for the voice of his favorite girlfriend, Queenie, a cocker spaniel. And the boy who just wanted to hear some Indiana farm birds again. Well, command performance paid off in those letters. And now here we go again from private PWB somewhere in Australia. Dear command performance, I was strictly that boy who used to think the West Coast was a couple of stops past Hoboken. I'm sure getting around now, but there'll never be another place like New York. In my bunk last night, I thought, wouldn't it be swell if command performance could take all us guys from New York back home for a minute? And here's the way to do it. Just give us an ear full of the good old hurdy-gurdy man. Your wish is our command, fella. He's coming down the street right now, the hurdy-gurdy man. Thank you, Sam, and if you're looking for your monkey, he's on a Thursday night show selling cheese. But now, <laughs> but now, <laughs> uh, but now to answer a lot of mail for a certain gal that all of you know, at Fort William Davis, Sergeant BNP wants her to sing for AOS of Panama. Ten men in the canal zone send in orders for her. The Marines at Balboa and Private J.E.E. -E and the sailors of Boys Town, Pearl Harbor, with an eye for beauty and talent. All these and scores more of you asked for. So, fellas, here she is, back again by worldwide command of the AEF to sing, Till I Live Again, Ginny Sims. <laughs>
you, Ginny Sims. That was beautiful, and you're mighty beautiful, too. That's the way I feel. <laughs> oh, you're really pretty. You know, that's the way with me, though. I work with so many beautiful girls like Ginny Sims, Madeline Carroll, Dorothy Lamour, and Paulette Goddard. Then at night I go home and dream about Indians. I have the toughest. <laughs> I can't understand. I think I'll throw away my Gene Autry gun, but you know, <laughs> it was really... And now, fellas, our first complaint in 21 shows, 12 sergeants in North Ireland write to us on May 16th and say this. Our show is wonderful except for two things. First, it's only a half hour. Second, we haven't yet heard our favorite actress. So we command you to give us Rosalind Russell. Oh, well... We'll get to it. <laughs> With 12 of us signing this letter, call it a petition instead of a command. Petition, command, what's the difference, sergeants? As long as you're happy, you'd better be, for here she is, lovely Rosalind Russell. <laughs> Tonight, Command Performance presents Rosalind Russell and Bob Hope in a little sketch of the great outdoors. The sketch is a sequel to the picture, <laughs> It Happened One Night, and the title is It Didn't. Our scene by a country road, a soulful young poet played by Bob Hope sits by the roadside communing with nature. Q says, hum a strain, Hope, please. <laughs> Suddenly, his reverie is broken by... Hiya, handsome. How'd you like to ride with a lonesome gal? On your way, smart Alec. I'm not interested. Uh... <laughs> now, come on, come on, gorgeous. Now, don't you play hard to get with me. Now, come on, hope in. Uh... <laughs> I mean, hop in. Well, I won't. And if you don't stop annoying me, I'll call a policeman. Oh, sugar. How about a break? Defrost. Melt. Come on, give me a tumble. I'm not in the habit of tumbling with strange women. <laughs> At these prices, especially when I don't know them. Now, scat! I happen to be very busy. Doing what? I'm a poet, and I'm writing poetry. From the look on your face, it must be blank verse. <laughs> oh, well, you may not know it, sister, but you're talking to America's bar to the billboards. Oh! Oh, you mean you write those funny little advertising poems on the side of the road? What else? The Burma Shave, Irving Berlin. That's me. <laughs> well, have you published anything lately? Well, here's my latest, hot off the boards. For chicken dinners, beer or gas, try our service, Strictly Class. Where can you find that welcome smile? At Turl Williger's Tavern, a quarter of a mile. How do you like it? <laughs> well, it's not going to make no coward take in washing. Well, here's one with a little more class. You will find our journey's end down the road around the bend. Tourist cabins are real delight, so do drop in six bits a night. <laughs> I just wrote that. Can you think of a good place to put it? Don't tempt me. <laughs> oh, but come on now. We're wasting time. Come on, Shakespeare. Hop in the car and snuggle up closer to me. Come on. Come on, it'll do you the world of good. How? <laughs> a ride might help you in your work. You might get a few ideas. Not the kind I can put on a billboard. <laughs> now, now, look, baby, now let's face it. You and I can make beautiful music together. Now, do you want to get picked up or don't you? <laughs> Why, I've never been so insulted in my life. How do you open the door? <laughs> The doors don't work. Well, how did you get in there? I was born here. <laughs> That's the machine age for you. Even the stork's working on the assembly line. Now, come Crosby on. is the captain. Now, Shakespeare, will you come on? Let's go. Say, gorgeous. Why don't you sit a little closer to me? Well, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Now, look. Look. You feel perfectly safe with me, don't you? Yeah, about as safe as a Scotch highball at an American Legion convention. <laughs> oh, you kill me, Shakespeare. Oh, if I were married, I could go for you. Well, why would you have to be married? Because you're the only man I've ever met who uh, wouldn't make a husband jealous. <laughs> now, look. Come here. Why don't you move over closer to me? Oh, what's the use? I'll move over close to you, and one thing will lead to another, and the first thing you know, we'll be playing gin rummy. <laughs> oh, come on. 
no. Now, don't be bashful. Oh, now, don't you get fresh with me. I've been around. I've learned a lot about women like you. Who from? Women like you. <laughs> now, are you going to be a nice boy and put your arm around me, or aren't you? Listen, I've never said this to a girl before, but... Yes? I think I'll get out and walk. Oh, oh no, you can't do that. You're ten points to me. I'm what? Look, Shakespeare, I'm on a scavenger hunt. If I bring in a crummy-looking hitchhiker within 20 minutes, I get ten points. Well, do you think I'm crummy enough? <laughs> it's a cinch. <laughs> now, really, but if, now, if he kisses me, I want to tell you, I get 12 points. And if he falls in love with me, I get 15 points. Well, don't look now, lady, but your 10 points are getting out of the car. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, I've still got 18 minutes left to make five more points out of you. Tell me. Have you ever kissed a girl on a bumpy road? What do you think? I got a nose like this. <laughs> well, now, come here. Now, are you going to kiss me now? Or do I have to... Do I have to run out of gas? Well, I would, but I'm afraid you might run into a telephone pole. Oh, don't be silly. I'll keep on blowing my horn. Now, hurry up and kiss me. You mean like this? Yes, yes, like this. <laughs> Uh, uh, don't look now, but uh, you, you got a worse nose than ever. <laughs> don't look now, but you just got 15 points. <laughs> I loved it. Encore! Woo <laughs> Say, uh, that was swell, Roz. I certainly enjoyed being here on command performance with you. Thank you, Bob. Oh, and Roz, uh, tell me, are you really like... I mean, if a fella did go out riding with you, would you really... That is... Oh, you know what I mean. When I... I certainly do, Bob. What are you doing tonight after the broadcast? Me? Well, isn't that a coincidence? I don't have a single thing to do. Well, Bob, any time you want a date and a cozy tete-a-tete, there's just one thing for you to do. Call Van Nuys, 6132. Is that your number, Rosalind? No, that's the YWCA. <laughs> Rosalind Russell. Well, gang, as the Nazis say, when they see those General Grants bearing down on them, we'd better be moving along. Thanks a lot for those letters. We're mighty proud of them. You know, when we were kids in school, we used to look forward to winning our letter and wearing it on our sweater. But those letters you send in, we wear next to our hearts. This is Bob Hope saying so long from the USA. And by the way, fellas, Hitler is always talking about his spring offensive, but brother, that guy's offensive all year round. And remember... <laughs> And remember, fellas, Uncle Sam will spring the offensive from now on, and after that will be the last fall for Hitler. So long, fellas. Performance USA and good night from the stars you've just heard. Bob Hope, Rosalind Russell, Ginny Sims, Lena Horne, Shaw and Lee, our musical conductor from Paramount Studios, Victor Young, and Les Brown and his orchestra. Now keep sending those letters, fellas. Send them to Command Performance in care of the station to which you're listening. You write them, buddy, and we'll short wave you the answers each week and every week till it's over over there. This is Paul Douglas saying the best of the best from the USA to you.